All you need to do is range, dial, aim, and squeeze. Bingo. When the buck or bull of a lifetime jumps out, but he's a little ways out there, what do you do? What's the best system that'll give you a chance at taking him down cleanly? Really savvy Western hunters have now gone to custom engraved dials that are marked in yardages for their rifle, their cartridge, at their hunting altitude and temperature. And it makes your system very, very simple. Folks, when the puppy in the back of your brain starts driving, anything that you can do to simplify your system and help you make that shot at the moment of truth is a big advantage. Now, dial-up turrets are all the rage these days, and they come in all forms, shapes, and sizes. Most of them, though, require you to consult the hard card, you know, a drop chart that you've taped inside your scope cap, or maybe to the side of your stock, or you're carrying it in the cargo pocket of your hunting pants. Or maybe, worse yet, you pull out your smartphone and you open a ballistic app and that big buck's standing out there wondering what's going on. You gotta scroll through and figure out, okay, are my environmental parameters right? Okay, here's the distance. He's between 370 and 400 yards, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it just takes too much time. Simplify, simplify, simplify. With a custom dial, you just go straight to the range and yards, aim and squeeze. Now. Custom dials can be a pain though, right? You gotta order them, you gotta get all those parameters right, you gotta wait for them. Then if you switch loads, you've gotta order another one. How about if you can make your own, folks? How about a DIY turret that you can do in five minutes or less in your garage or at the range, wherever you want to? As long as you've got a silver metallic Sharpie marker and can handle a ballistic app on a smartphone or or on the computer, you can make your own DIY custom dial for your turret. I call them a hillbilly turret, and that's uh, meant with the greatest pride in that word, right? This is one that I've made. I've got a target out here at uh, right at 300 yards. Okay, I'm zero to 200. Let's see how quickly I can make a precise shot on that target. I'm gonna just dial to 300, jump into position behind my gun, Chamber around, breathe and squeeze. Smack, that's a great sound. So folks, as I mentioned, super easy to make one of these yourself. Let's walk through that process. Creating your own custom dial-up turret for your scope is pretty easy, folks. Whatever type of scope you use, as long as it's got a quality dial-up uh, type turret cap on it, you can use that, you can modify it to represent yards as well as whatever minute of angle or mill based scale the original turret displays around its circumference, right? You're just gonna need a metallic silver Sharpie marker to write your yardage numbers on that turret. And you're gonna need a basic understanding of how to calculate ballistics, whether you do that on a ballistic app on your smartphone, which is the way most folks are gonna do it, or on a computer program. Assuming you're watching this on YouTube, folks, you're probably savvy enough to, uh, to do either of those tasks. So I call this my hillbilly custom turret system, and I use that term with pride, my friends. It's uh, a process that I developed myself over the years caused by, well, a couple things. One, I may have a, a favorite scope on a favorite rifle, but I'm using a lot of different types of ammunition in it. Maybe I'm hunting pronghorn antelope one month and then the next month I'm taking that rifle somewhere to hunt for moose and I want to use a different load in it. So having a, a true custom turret that's engraved for your yards for a certain bullet in your rifle at a certain atmospheric condition, meaning your altitude and your temperature, can be a, limit, a little bit limiting if you know, you just hunt uh, a typical species in a typical environment that'll serve you the rest of your life. But if you want flexibility, it's kind of nice to be able to make your own on the fly. And that's what we're going to show you how to do here. The other uh, scenario, of course, is that in my work as a gun rider, I'm constantly switching scopes from one rifle to another. And I might go from a 
a 6mm Creedmoor uh, one month to use in a scope on something like a 300 h and h the next month. And if I want to shoot it out at distance, let's say past 300 yards or so, it really helps to have a good dial-up turret on that scope. And if you're going to hunt with it, save yourself the hassle of digging out an app in the field, right? Turning it on, inputting whatever information you need to for the current environment, your altitude and temperature and all that, referencing your dial up in minutes of angle and then dialing it and then trying to find your game animal you're trying to shoot again, folks, right? If you can just range, dial, aim, and squeeze, it really simplifies the process. It also makes it easy to work with a hunting partner who can range an animal for you while you're preparing for a shot. So let's take this a step at a time. The first thing you're going to need is that metallic silver Sharpie marker. I like metallic silver because it shows up real good against most of the matte black turrets on the market today. And you can use this system on anything from a little turret, such as this one that just dials about 15 minutes of elevation per rotation, right up to the, the massive stuff uh, like this crossover hunting slash competitive uh, like PRS type scope the dials geez what is that that's a full 40 minutes of elevation per rotation you can still write numbers on the top of that now this system works best out to about 600 yards folks if you're shooting past 600 yards on targets or whatnot sometimes it is important to put in real time altitude and temperature and any other conditions that can influence the very uh, fine details of your shots at extreme range. And my friends, I just don't recommend ever shooting at game past 600 yards. So we don't even need to address that, at least from my perspective. So for the, the 600 yard and inside shot, this type of uh, DIY turret works great. Let's walk through that process. First, you're going to need to input some parameters. These are the same parameters that you would provide to a custom dial manufacturer, such as Leupold. You know, they offer a custom dial. They call it the CDS custom dial system turret, a free turret with every uh, scope they sell in, in most of their upper end lines and, and middle ground lines. Or you can order a custom turret from Kenton Industries or, or whatever. There's a lot of different places that can do that for you. You're going to need these same parameters. I'm going to so consult my handy dandy uh, notes here. First, you need your bullets ballistic coefficient. And you can usually find that on the manufacturer's website. Sometimes you'll find it on the back of your box of ammunition, which is real handy. That's generally going to be displayed in either a G1 or a G7 BC. G1 applies more to flat-based bullets with a lead tip, that type of profile, where the G7 is better for your real streamlined boat-tailed bullets with a fine, uh, long, uh, you know, fine entry tip on it. So you need your bullet BC. Next, you're going to need the velocity from your specific rifle. And folks, this doesn't um, mean you can just go to the back of the box and look at your velocity. The BC listed on the back of your ammo box, if it's there, is probably accurate. The velocity is an estimate. It's an average that manufacturers think that ammunition will produce in most rifles. And my friends, in general, it's a little bit optimistic, especially if you're shooting something like this Browning X-Bolt II SPR, suppressor-ready rifle, with a 20-inch barrel rather than the standard 24 for which that ammunition was probably uh, generated and certainly at which the velocity was measured. So find a chronograph, find a friend with one, borrow one, whatever you need to do, figure out a way to measure your velocity from your rifle. And here's a good example. This specific rifle shoots about 140 feet per second slower because of the shorter barrel than listed on the ammunition box for the load that I like to shoot through it. That's plenty to make you miss a shot, misjudge wind, the whole works out there at extended distances, folks. The Bullet BC, actual velocity with your load and your rifle, the specific load you're tailoring this turret for, right? Next, you need to estimate the average altitude and the average temperature you're going to be hunting in. Now, these aren't crucial, folks. If you go up or down a couple of thousand feet from what uh, your turret is calculated for, 
you're going to be fine. Now, if you go from Florida to hunting elk in the high mountains of Colorado at 11 or 12,000 feet, that's not going to be fine. The atmospheric density change between those two altitudes is enough that your bullet flight path will be much, much different. But like I say, you can get away with a couple of thousand feet worth of discrepancy and 20, 30, 40 degrees worth of uh, temperature discrepancy. So, for example, around my home state, uh, my home area here in my home state of Idaho, I generally hunt deer at around six to 7,000 feet, but sometimes as low as 5,000 or even 4,500. So I crunch my turrets for 6,000 feet in 45 degree temperatures. That way, if I find a deer at 4,500 feet down in the low country or at 7,500 feet up in uh, the higher mountains, I'm fine. And if, you know, maybe it's colder one morning and I'm out there hunting at 20 degrees or we have a warm Indian summer and it's 60 degrees, I'm going to be fine. You just have to use some practical um, application here, folks. And the great beauty of making your own is if you're moving to hunt or not moving, but you're traveling to hunt a totally different area, you can just wipe those numbers off using carburetor cleaner, brake cleaner, whatever, and uh, redo it. Crunch those numbers in your ballistic app for the environment you're heading for. And while we're on the topic of adjusting those silver numbers you've written on, a listener of my podcast, the Backcountry Hunting Podcast, taught me a trick. Wipe off marker, right? Dry erase marker dissolves permanent Sharpie marker. So those numbers on the top, if you get them good and wet with something like a little dry erase marker and then just erase them, they come right off. Great trick that, uh, you know, you can do just swiping a marker from your kids. Okay, next thing you're going to need, and this is crucial, is your sight in distance. And this is whether you're supplying these parameters to a manufacturer, you're just crunching it yourself, right? I recommend a zero distance of 200 yards for hunting here in the West. If you hunt big woods country, well, first of all, you don't need a dial-up turret because all your shots are going to be close. But then it's fine to zero to 100 yards. However, here in the West where your shots really average mostly between 200 and 400 yards, sighting in at 100 is a waste of a perfectly good flat trajectory in a a good high-powered cartridge, right? So zero at 200. And you'll probably hit somewhere between an inch and a quarter and two inches high at 100. And you can calculate that out in your app, too, if all you have is a 100-yard range to zero. Just sight in to put your group however high. The app says it should be at 100 yards when you're sighted in at 200. Okay, uh, helpful but less crucial is your scope height above your action, right? If you're getting real real fine detailed about this and this is especially important if you're going to be shooting long range competitions where you may be taking 1400 yard shots then it's important to know how high your scope is above the center line of your bore and there's ways you can measure that but for hunting it just isn't that important most measurements are going to be between one and a half inches if you get your scope mounted real low up to about 1.7 inches for a scope mounted more like this one the conventional height for the you know today's bigger scopes Uh, above your action okay don't put any wind in your app Uh, that can mess with the elevation adjustments in some of the apps and and it'll tell you uh, some things that are unhelpful Uh, don't enact spin drift that's the drift of your bullet um, at extended range because of the the rifling twist right and no earth-based effects we're not uh, incorporating coriolis or anything like that into our Uh, fast action shots in the field out to a maximum of 600 yards. They just don't matter that much, folks. So you put those elements into your ballistic app on your smartphone. Then let's say you've got a two on your turret, uh, or you've got a 200 yard position on your turret for your 200 yard zero. You're going to write a little two right there. I like to also make a little tiny hash mark on the front edge of the the dial that I can easily see from the prone position. While I'm looking at the animal, I just raise my head a fraction of an inch, look at my turret and dial till I see that hash mark. Next, you're gonna go to your app and pull up your ballistics and you're going to read how many 
uh, clicks, you have to come up for 300 yards. In this case, this is a 6.8 Western. I'm shooting 175 grain long range pro bullet in Browning ammunition. It's two minutes of angle to come up for 300 yards. I'm going to write a three and put my little hash mark right there. Now I have my 200 and 300 yard marks for my long range turret. Repeat that for 500 yard, uh, 400 yards, excuse me. And write yourself another number and another hash mark. Okay, you get the drift. You can go all the way around your turret if you want doing this. Some of the bigger faced turrets or topped turrets like this one, this is a VX5 HD scope from Leupold, has a big surface. There's plenty of room there to write up to about 900, sometimes even a thousand yards worth of come up on your turret, assuming you're shooting a good um, efficient cartridge with a high BC bullet pushed up pretty fast velocities. Even on a little turret like this one on this, uh, VX3 HD from Leopold. This has 15 minutes of rotation. You just get one rotation and then you bottom out, right? Still, 15 minutes will usually get you out to about 750 yards. Again, further than I think most hunters have any business shooting a big game. Before we close, folks, here's your tip of the day. When you've taken your shot, always, always remember to dial down your turret back to your 200 yard zero. More big bucks and bulls have been lost with a shot sailing over their back when followed up. You know, if you're sneaking in to try and find something and you jump them up at close range, you haven't dialed down, you're gonna shoot real high, folks. Remember to always, always dial it down. As far as scope issues goes, that's probably uh, one of the, the mistakes that serious riflemen are most afraid of, and that's a good thing, because it keeps them cautious. Always dial down after the shot. There you have it, folks. Easy as one, two, three, ABC. You can make your own custom dial-up turret. Let's take one more shot out here, this time at 416 yards, which I've just ranged. Smack. Here's the thing. When complex thought processes go out the window. You want to keep it simple. That means using a dial-up turret engraved for your yards for shots past 300 yards, or I would say 300 yards and out. It also means not having to deal with a bunch of other complicating factors. And so making your own turret offers a whole bunch of flexibility. It opens up the ability to test a bunch of different loads to switch loads. If you want to go from an antelope load to a moose load in your rifle, you can do it. No problem, right? Just adds versatility and adaptability whenever you need to, and it will help you make the shot at the moment of truth. Now, as Ron Spummer would say, Folks, hunt honest and shoot straight. I'm Joseph Von Benedict with the Backcountry Hunting Podcast. I'll see you in the backcountry.